Assalamualaikum. Hi everybody. So today we proceed to topic 2 which is simple interest. Let's look at the introduction to simple interest. So what is simple interest? Simple interest is calculated based on the principal amount. Simple interest amount is charged based on amount borrowed or invested or deposited after certain period. So how to calculate simple interest? Look at here. Capital I. So I represents simple interest amount which is this is the formula to calculate simple interest amount. I equal to PRT. What is P? Principal amount. R simple interest rate which is given in percentage form and then t in years okay now we proceed how to calculate simple interest amount but first you must remember these three basic information to calculate simple interest amount so first one is p principal amount are simple interest rate and the third one is T which is term. Look at first example. Calculate the simple interest amount charged if RM4000 was borrowed at 4.5% simple interest for 2 years. So this one direct question. Why I said it direct question? Look at here. Calculate the simple interest amount means what we have to calculate here is simple interest amount which is I. I equal to PRT. So what is P? Look at here. P RM 4000. R. So R in percentage form. So this one 4.5% and T. How many years? two years so since we have three information to calculate simple interest amount so we can calculate directly first here from 4.5 percent convert to decimal then substitute p 4000 r 0 0.045 and then t is 2 Calculate at the end the simple interest amount equal to RM360. Okay, now proceed to second example. Mr. Nizam invested RM20,000 in an invested scheme that offered simple interest rate at 5% for 6 months. Find the simple interest amount. So this one. We also need to calculate simple interest amount here. So what is the information that we need? First one is P. So P here is 20,000. Then second information R. Always in percent. 5%. Then T. Term. Given in month unit. So, you need to convert month to year. So, R, R here, 5%. Convert to decimal, 0 0.05. And then, T here, given in 6 months. So, 6 months. 1 year, how many months? 12 months. Therefore, 6 over 12. 0 0.5 substitute so 20,000 times 0 0.05 times 0 0.5 therefore the simple interest amount based on Mr. Nizam's investment is RM500 so this one two example to represent how to calculate simple interest amount Okay, now we proceed to simple amount. Previous is simple interest amount. So this one, simple amount. So what is simple amount? Which is denoted by capital S. So simple amount is the total amount to be paid at the end of the loan period. So this one based on borrowed. Or the total amount 
in the saving account at the end of the investment. So this one based on investment or deposit scheme. So simple amount also known as future value or total amount or accumulated amount. So how to calculate simple amount as equal to P plus I. So P principal amount, I simple interest amount. So this one, three different formula how to calculate simple amount. First one, P plus I. Second one, P plus PRT. And last one here is P in bracket, 1 plus RT. Three different formula, but at the end, the aim is still same, which is to calculate simple amount. Let's try to calculate simple amount. Based on example 3, calculate the simple amount to be paid if RM8500 was borrowed for 5 years at 3.5% simple interest per annum. So this one, we need to calculate simple amount. So here, direct question. We need to calculate S. What is the information given? RM8500. Next, 5 years. And last one, 3.5% simple interest rate. First, remember this basic information. P, principal amount. I, simple interest. R, simple interest rate. And last one, T, is term. So, let's solve this example. First method. Based on this information, we can use this formula to calculate simple amount. S equal to P in bracket 1 plus RT. Substitute all the information or all the values at the end. Simple amount equal to RM9987.5. So this one, we use this formula to calculate simple amount. Okay, next, let's try another formula or another method to calculate simple amount. Okay, so this one, we can use S equal to P plus I. Remember that S simple amount, which is principal plus interest amount. So, first, what we need to calculate here is simple interest amount. So, simple interest amount, which is I. So, I equal to PRT substitute. So, simple interest amount equal to 1487.5. Okay, next. What we need to calculate is simple amount. Therefore, S equal to P plus I substitute P8500 and then plus 1487.5. So, at the end, find the answer for second method equal to 9987.5 which is equal to first method. So, this one, two different methods but at the end, the simple amount is same. Okay, we proceed to example 4. How to calculate simple amount. I borrowed RM5000 from QQ Bank that charged 6.5% simple interest per annum. How much should I pay at the end of the third year? So this one, based on the example, what? is the information given so first one is the value of p so p 5000 based on this statement i borrowed rm 5000 then r equal to 6.5 percent so 6.5 percent from this one 6.5 percent simple interest per annum from percentage convert to decimal form and last one T equal to 3 based on this one at the end of the third year. So next, how to calculate 
simple amount. So we can use this formula, substitute all the three values at the end. I should pay RM5975 at the end of the third year. Okay, let's try another example. Azam invested RM10,000 in an invested scheme that offer simple interest rate at 5% for 5 years. Find the total amount at the end of the investment period. So this one, we need to calculate total amount. So total amount, simple amount. So based on this information, P equal to 10,000, R equal to 5%, and last one, T equal to 5 years. We can use this formula. First, calculate simple interest amount. So I equal to PRT, substitute at the end, the interest amount equal to 2,500. But 2,500 is only the interest amount. So, we proceed to calculate simple amount. So, simple amount equal to P plus I. Substitute principal value plus interest value. So, at the end, the total amount that Azam will receive at the end of the investment period equal to RM12,500. Now we proceed to exact time and approximate time method. First look at exact time method. So this method based on exact number of days of each month which is 28 or 29 or 30 or 31 days. Let's say January, how many days? 31 days. June, how many days? 30 days. December, how many days? 31 days. February, how many days? Okay, so this one, special case. Why I said it's special? Look at here. It's February. So February, is it 28 or 29 days? So this one, you must alert for leap year. So how to know, is it leap year or not? Okay, let's try simple example. Okay, let's see. Year 2020. Is it leap year or not? You can divide by 4. Why 4? Because leap year occurred once in 4 years. So you need to divide by 4. Then you got 505. Is it any decimal point? No decimal point. Therefore, 2020 is a leap year. So, leap year, how many days? 29 days. If not leap year, how many days? 28 days. So, remember how to ensure that that year is leap year or not. You can divide the year with 4. If you got in decimal point, that one is not leap year. But if you got no decimal point, so that one is leap year. Okay, next, approximate time method. So this one, easy method. Why easy? Because each month, we assume the number of days equal to 30 days. From January to December, 30 days. February 30, March 30, April 30. So from January to December, 30 days for each month. Look at this example. Find the number of days from 16 November 2020 until 13 February 2021 using exact time method and approximate time method. First, exact time method. We can construct table like this. So here is 16 November based on starting. 16 November 2020, then stop at 13 February 2021, okay, from here until here, so after November, December, after December, January, 
So next, how to calculate number of days. So for November, how many days? 30 days minus 16. So minus 16 here, 14. Then December, how many days? 31. January, 31. And then stop at 13. 13. So calculate total up at the end the number of days using exact time method equal to 89 days. Okay, then for approximate time method. So using same table from 16 November 2020 until 13 February 2021. So, using approximate time method, we assume that number of days of each month equal to 30 days. So, here 30, 30, 30. So, first one minus 16 got 14. And last one, we stop at 13 February. So, here is 13. Calculate at the end number of days using approximate time method equal to 87 days. Exact time method, 89 days. Approximate time method, 87 days. So this one, the example, how to calculate the number of days using two different time method. Okay, now let's try another quick chart. Three questions, then check the answers. Okay guys, that's all for today. Next, we will focus on Banker's Rule. Assalamualaikum and da.